tell of war with Bonaparte, of how in Serum as elsewhere the people hearkened for the post-horn, news from town or port, to share the word fresh shouted in the streets of Nelson's battle at Trafalgar, Wellesley's bloody victory at Waterloo, and peace thereafter. Oh now, what stirring and scarifying times they were for the English people, especially for the rich and the landed ones, when the French folk stormed the Bastille, knocked their royals on the head, and proceeded to set up Madame Guillotine in Paris to settle forever the wealthy lords of that great nation. The tumbrils racing through the night streets towards another girt beheading. But then, out of the violent horde, rose Nick Little Corsican, Napoleon Bones Apart, a truly marvellous military commander, whose armies would turn all Europe bloody red. Thick war of Napoleon had been going on for some years already, when there come a critical moment. Bones apart were making ready to invade England, and all that stood between the combined French and Spanish fleets that would make it possible were the British Navy. Gert Admiral Nelson had been trailing his fleet of warship out of the enemy for some time, and we at home all knew that sometime soon there must come the Gert battle. All we could do were sit and wait and pray. What we didn't know was that on Monday the 21st of October, in that year of 1805, Nelson in his flagship, the Victory, had got the combined enemy fleet in the perfect position, with the wind in his favour, and time for his own battle fleet, the Hearts of Oak, to bring on Vic Battle in their own terms. The enemy fleet were there laid out from left to right, their mass of gun ports open, ready for battle, all they hundreds of guns ready to shoot at our boys. And knowing how Nelson always said, never mind manoeuvres, just go straight at them, the enemy might have expected that our fleet would come in line and engage them broadside to broadside. But Nelson, he were a clever man, and lined his fleet up in two arrowheads, one led by the Victory, followed by the Temeraire and the Neptune, and the other led by the Royal Sovereign, followed by Belle Isle and Mars. These were the spearhead and had to approach the enemy line, taking all their fire without being able to fire back, making a terrible carnage of the ships, before they then got among the French and Spanish, and could really let loose. My, my, tis impossible for you and I to picture the terrible noise, the screams of men cut up by splinters of wood, destroyed by hurtling balls, the clouds of smoke flashing with fire, the constant explosions, the small arms fire from the tops, and it went on grimly for hours and hours, blood flowing from the scuppers of many a day ship, until the pendulum clearly swung to a French and Spanish defeat, ship after ship striking their colours. From this calamitous, triumphant fleet engagement, the British dispatched a little schooner, a tiny gazelle of a ship, like a wee powder boy running between the great guns to supply the gun decks, to take the dispatches back to England, telling of the triumphant outcome of the great Battle of Trafalgar and the death of Vice Admiral Lord Nelson. H.M. Schooner Pickle, under Lieutenant John La Penetier, left the scene of battle and made for the channel, while the surviving ships licked their wounds and fought for their very lives in a terrible storm through the Bay of Biscay. La Penetier landed at Falmouth a fortnight later and set out express by post chase for London, an exhausting journey of 37 hours, changing horses every 15 or 20 miles. There were 21 changes of horse, and at every point of the journey people would hear the ringing of the thundering horses entering the place. Windows would go up, people emerged to hear the news, and church bells would be rung as they went on up the road. A great victory, do you hear? A great victory! 
the 14th change of his horses were at Salisbury on the afternoon of the 5th of November, and it cost him £1.17 shillings and sixpence. But it were money well spent to get that news to the Admiralty in London, which he did at 1am on Wednesday the 6th of November 185. The Prime Minister and the King were told at once, and special editions of newspapers spread the news across the country. News so wonderful, and at the same time so dire. A great victory, but also the loss of our great hero, Horatio Nelson. But just think, we in Salisbury, who happened to be about town that day, we heard the news first of that girt victory. And I have always regarded that girt three-decker HMS victory down at Portsmouth as the most important and exciting link with our naval past. You go and see it for yourselves. You won't be disappointed.